If you've never used Editable, what it does is basically allows you to reference stuff uh, from verse to UEFN and vice versa. So for example, if I wanted this button uh, in my code, what I could do is I can make an ad editable and I could type in button of type button underscore device that. And by the way, you can either write it like this or um, like this. You're going to see that now I have the editable button here and I can just select it like that. Cool, that's fine. That's pretty obvious. You can also have a bunch of other editable types. So for example, I can have an integer editable, a float editable, a string editable, a boolean or a logic editable, and then even arrays editable, right? So when we go back in here and we build our verse code, you can see we have integer my number, which it will only receive integers. So for example, six, one, or you can do this cool sliding thing. Uh, same for floats here. And say for strings, I can type in a string here. Hello, I can even type emojis. So this, a heart, a bunch of hearts, and you can have that. And then Boolean gives us this cool little check mark thing. So you can either make it true, false, cool. And then obviously arrays, you can add elements to the array. This one's an integer array, so I can put one for the first element. Right, but that's so pretty obvious. But let's look at the conditional button, for example. So I want to make my verse device be more like the normal creative devices that we have here. For example, this one, we have a bunch of stuff here, a bunch of tabs. It's all neatly organized. How can I make it more like? This will if the first problem we have is that here for our integers, uh, we can basically go to infinity here. So let's say I wanted to clamp an editable integer. So for example, I'm going to make an ad editable. I'm going to pet count of type int equals one. So let's say I wanted a integer that tells me how many pets I have within my game. Here I can specify a bunch of pets, and that's kind of annoying. I would ideally want this to be greater than zero because no negative pets allowed and less than 100. So what I could do is I could use the type macro to clamp my value here. So I can type in type and what type does is basically just infers the type of whatever I put in here. So inside here, I'm going to put an integer that is between some number and some other number. So I can do underscore x, which is an int. And then I can type in where underscore X and here I can type in some numeric range so I can do is greater than zero. And you can see that I can initialize that to one and that's fine. If I try to initialize this to negative one, you'll notice you get an error because this needs to be obviously greater than. You'll notice that now I can't go below one but but i can still go over this so ideally we want to not do that so i can after this i can type in comma and then i can type in underscore x is less than or equal to we can use equals to let's say 100 right and then we go back here and you'll notice that now the pet count you can see that's clamped from one to 100 and it gives this cool little filling bar animation thing like this so you can also do the same with float so i can if i make for example an editable and max speed you can do a type and then i'm going to do underscore x of type float and then of course specify a numeric range again so for example underscore x is greater than or equal to 0, 0.0 and then underscore x is less than or equal to 100.0 and then you'll notice that now i have this float it's clamped between zero and now another cool thing that i don't see a lot of people using is editable enums so let me create an enum here i'm going to do i don't know Color, right? Is an enum here. And then we can do red, green, blue. I can actually make this editable. So I can do editable. And then I can do my color. Color dot red. And if I go back here, you'll notice that now for our enum, we have this cool little drop down menu, which gives me all the options that correspond to my enum here. But so far, so good. But we can also make structs editable. For example, if I have a player underscore info, which is a struct, I can put stuff like health. Right now, if I try to make this editable like this, you'll notice we get an error. And the reason is because we need to make structs concrete to make them editable. And what concrete does is basically it, it forces you to initialize these uh, structure members here to a default value. So I cannot just leave this like this because we have the concrete specifier. This needs to be initialized to something. So to 10. And if we go back here, so you notice I have my player info here, but I don't actually have our members. What's going on? You know, I want to access my health shield and set them within the editor. Is that not possible? Well, it is, but we need to make these individual members 
editable. All right, and now what that allows us to do is we can make stuff that we want to be exposed editable. So when I compile that, you can see that now I can, I have this little drop thingy and I can set the health like this. So we can make structs editable. And you know what else is a struct? A vector, right? So my vector of type three, and also, you know what else is a struct? And that's also editable, a transform. If we peek at the definition here of the a vector, you'll notice that this is a struct concrete and we have these editable attributes, X, Y, and Z. You'll notice that I have my vector here. I can specify the X, Y, and Z. So that's a cool way to expose vectors to the editor. We also have the transform, which this one's probably one of the coolest ones. If we expand this, we get the scale, which we can specify individual X and Y scales if you do need a transform. We also get rotation, right? So we can just literally copy a rotation. For example, this, uh, I'm going to grab this. You can copy this. You can do shift right click on your mouse and then go back here and then you can do shift left click and that's going to paste that there. Obviously, this isn't rotated, so I'm going to rotate this like kind of like this, like this and rotation. You can see that copies uh, there. And then also for translation, this one's a little wonky. We can also make classes editable. So I'm going to make a car class, which is a class. And just like structs, we need to add this concrete specifier. And I'm going to make a. So I'm going to get rid of these and I'm going to an editable my car type car equals car right i notice that now when i go back into verse you notice i have my car we have colors speed then wheels now the benefit of using classes is that well for one we can have variable stuff here type int equals zero where it is structs you're not allowed to have variables because everything is immutable in here and we can obviously also have functions here and that's cool i know but another cool thing you can do is that you can actually, you can make a subclass and that's going to actually inherit the editable property. So let me make a, another Honda Civic is a class which extends car. Now you don't need to add the concrete specifier to anything that inherits from an already concrete class because implicitly it's also going to be concrete. Actually, if you try to put concrete here, it's going to give you an error. So let's say Honda Civic is also going to have year. So year of type int equals 2020. Then if I go up here, my Civic of type of Honda Civic, you'll notice that now when I go back here to, we'll get our Civic here. And not only do we have the editable attributes from the generic car class, we also have this year property, which we can change in here. All right now, this also leads me to my next point that you can actually embed editable classes within another editable class, right? So we have a car and we have a Honda Civic Let's make a dealership class, right? So dealership is a class and this one is going to be concrete. All right. And inside here, I'm going to have, I'm going to have cars. So cars of type car equals array. Also going to have my civic type, right? So we have a dealership which embeds or has a bunch of cars in an array and then a Honda civic as an editable attribute. So what I can do here is I can make an net editable here, my dealership and initialize that like that. If we go back here, you'll notice that we have our dealership. And when we expand this, now we can have a list of cars, which each one we can expand, which has its own properties like this. So you'll notice here we have car wheels, all that cool stuff. And then even for my civic, we can expand that and we can take this a step further and say, let's say we have a city, which is a class concrete. And this city has a bunch of dealerships of type dealership equals array. Boom. So we have a city which has a dealership arrays and do my city of type city equals city. And when we go back here, we have your good old city and then we can have many dealerships. So dealership one, dealership two, when we expand each dealership that has its own cars, which has its own properties, which has a civic, which has speed, it gets messy in this case, but actually it's really nice for organizing stuff. And obviously I can get rid of a dealership here. So I'm get rid of that. And you can see how this allows you to or better organize your variables if you do want to expose them. But that pretty much wraps it up. I'm going to be making a bunch of dealerships and constructing my mega city tycoon. But as always, I hope this was helpful to you guys. And yeah.